So I encourage you to share your polka dot story today and I'm going to share mine with you. So it's our sixth birthday today. We started actually in 2012. So I owned my region's women's magazine. It was a lot like polka dot, but in print. And it was very motivational, inspirational. Uh, but readers started to say, it's really cool to read about people like this, but how do I find people like that? How do I get them in my real life? At the same time, I was exposed to a lot of the really well-respected, important groups. You'll never hear me talk negatively about a group because they're all important, but I just didn't feel like home. Um, about two years before Polka Dot's birth, uh, my only sister, my sibling, Tina, passed. And um, that man, I may not get through, we'll see. Because it's a very important day and she's right here with me. So, um, a couple years before Polka Dot, my only sibling, my sister Tina, passed. And Tina was um, three years older than me. Like I said, my only sibling. And we had kind of, like most siblings do, we had gone through the muck together. And she was the closest person to me in my life, literally. So when she passed, there was just like this huge void there. And I was always, I, I think looking back, I was always looking to not replace it, but, but to help fill that void to some extent. So I remember being in the car and being upset about something and I don't even recall what it was, but I remember praying to my sister saying, Tina, I just need your help and I need your guidance. And all of a sudden the name Polka Dot Powerhouse was in my head. And I told Chris Wiggins, who is on here, hey, good morning, Chris. I know I'm supposed to do something with this name. I just don't know what it is. So. Um, you know, readers were telling us, how do I meet great people in real life? I was having a trouble finding my own uh, tribe of people. And then my sister sends me this amazing name that I know I'm supposed to do something with it. So I have Pop Rocks Brain, the Pop Rocks. Anybody else here have the Pop Rocks Brain? Where I have a lot of ideas. They don't necessarily make sense or go together, but I know at some point the right things will bubble up. So I was dealing with Pop Rocks Brain about all these ideas and about this name that Tina had sent me. So we're in an editorial board meeting for the magazine and you know that 20 seconds of courage that will get you into some trouble that shows up. So we're talking about an article and all of a sudden it just comes out of my mouth. I think we should start a local group. It'll be no drama just for women, uh, women, you know, building relationship. And they're all like looking at me like I'm crazy. Like we're talking about article three. And I remember one of the people that was there recently said to me, you know, I remember you were making no sense at all. <laughs> I'm like, yes, I remember that too. So anyway, um, I'm not sure they were completely bought in, but they were believers in the person that I was and they knew I would not intentionally th throw them down a weird path. So they supported it. We advertised it in the magazine. We had this perfect advertising vehicle of the magazine. So back cover, full page. We, we put the launch date like three months out. And we had over a hundred people say they were going to join. So I had a lot of stress going into launch day because we had a very cut and paste website at that point. And I thought there's no way this number of people is going to go through the website. So my big stressor, which I, I tell you, I was not eating, I was not sleeping, was that the number of people who were going to join was not going to be supported by our website. So yay, we get to launch day, which was six years ago today. We get to launch day and through that day only one person joins can you feel it with me only one person joins and I'm like oh my gosh like the embarrassment you know the fact that everybody else in the staff sees this people are asking you how's that thing going oh it's going great <laughs> great equaling one person so you know I kind of just I kind of just buffered it and said oh they just forgot we have to remind them and even two months later we only had the one paid member, which by the way, there was no way in this world I was gonna tell her she was the only paid member. She was a friend of mine. She was an advertiser with the magazine. I, she never knew because we had staff people in there as well. But Cora Sandstrom, and actually Cora wasn't told she was the only member, that first member, until last year. That's when she discovered that she was the first and only member that kept that fire stoked. So back to the story. We only had the one paid member. It had been a couple months since we launched and I had all these people that, you know, genuinely cared about me, cared about the company, saying, look, this was just a crappy idea. Like, 
the evidence is not here that we should continue. We should just shut this down. We should just cut our losses and, and bail. And I knew that what they were saying was true. I knew the evidence wasn't there that this was going to work. Like only one person in two months for a networking community. This is not good. And I knew what I was doing was going against, not against, but was a departure from the other group. So it hadn't been tested. And I knew that these people were all looking out for me and looking out for the company. But you know, sometimes in, in your gut, you just know you're not supposed to quit. And that's what happened with me. I kept hearing them. I kept appreciating their, um, their foresight and their advice and the fact that they cared but something in my gut said, don't quit. That was probably Tina. Don't quit. So I just dug my heels and I said, we're not going to quit. If it's just the five of us at a meeting, we're just going to go for it. We had our first live meeting in October of 12 in Eau Claire, actually Hallie, Wisconsin, about 20 minutes from my home. And 12 people came and 10 of them joined. And then we just inched it along. Like one month we would have zero people join. One month we would have one, one month we would have three, then back to zero. So it was not, I think at the end of the first year, the end of 2012, we had 30 members. So this was not a, it, you know, this is not one of those stories where, you know, they went down, but then immediately it catapulted. No, it was a constant inching it. And what we decided was in that first couple of months, when we knew that it wasn't going to be this instant miracle because you know what seldom is anything you just don't know the whole story you assume something's an instant miracle we knew that we had to focus on each dot sister as opposed to hitting a certain number okay so at the end of the year we had 30 people and then we started to have people travel to the meetings because it was so unique it was so different than what they were exposed to so we had people traveling an hour and an hour and a half to meetings and they kept wanting us to you should you know, start a chapter here. You should cha start a chapter there. And I always say this in launches. I will be totally transparent with you. My fear, if we spread out, is that they would know I didn't know what I was doing, right? Because I had some clout. I had some <laughs> credibility in my town because I owned a magazine. So people would, you know, pay some attention. But I knew if we go went to a different city where they didn't know me, they would discover that we were making it up as we went. Because in those early days let's try this and let's try this. It was a very much a, like a newborn baby and here it is. So I figured if we went outside of my zone, they would figure this out. But eventually enough people started saying things and the attorneys for our company started to say, hey, these companies are getting very melded together. You must split them apart before you have a problem. So we split the companies apart. We sold off the magazine um, and then Polkadot exploded because I allowed us, or we, the crew, allowed us to start going to a few other locations, and they had people traveling. And then we went to a few other locations, and they had people traveling. So yesterday you may have seen, yesterday you may have seen the news that we hit 3,000 members. And I know there's a lot of other communities that have, you know, many <laughs> zeros upon that. But it was so monumental, I landed. Uh, to come to California, I landed at a connection location, a flight connection, and I get the news we've hit 3,000, and I sat, have you ever done this? I'm walking through the airport trying not to cry, I go in the bathroom, I shut the door, I cry. Because back in those first days, where it was like this failed idea, where we couldn't get anybody behind Cora to sign up, when I wanted to be connected to people, when all that was going on, I could have never dreamt I could have never dreamt that we would have over 70 locations across the US and Canada, that we would have 3,000 sisters here. Oh man, this was the makeup for today. I am so messed up. Um, <laughs> but I never dreamt, I never knew, I never saw it coming. So for us to be at 3,000 members and over 70 locations across the US and Canada is just so extraordinary. Well, what I am here blessed to have you as members and are you blessed to have 3,000 sisters across the globe that want nothing more than to accept you for who you are and to help you get where you want to go, right? How blessed are we? 
I can't tell you how often people say, that is so rare. What we have is so rare, and it is. And now our goal, you know, when we started, our goal, my goal was to fill something, a hole I had in me, right? And now our goal is to bring sisterhood to the millions of women who need us, who need a community that will accept them, that will encourage them, that will push them, that will ask them their opinion. People want to be seen, heard, and appreciated. And that's what we have in our community.